So that's the uh, basic uh, for the GAN network. So let's look at uh, another uh, variant, which is uh, conditional GAN, okay? So in the conditional GAN, the generator uh, learns to generate a fake sample with a specific condition, um, rather just you know, generate a generic sample, right, from some unknown distribution, okay? So basically, you know, this condition, again, well, adding some of the conditions, right? Not just starting from the noise, but I want to um, adding some of the, you know, constraints or conditions so that the generate image will fit, um, fit some of the specific needs, right? So here's a couple of examples uh, that, you know, kind of we can use in the condition again, right? So here, this label map, is actual, uh, can be considered as a condition, right? So we are not just giving, feeding the network some random noise and ask the network to generate some uh, images. Uh, in this case, we are giving the network a label map, okay? As the condition to tell the network or the generator to generate some of the images that have the corresponding segmentation map, right? And for this uh, input, uh, is the satellite image right to the map again, right? So we are giving this generator a condition, right? So based on this aerial image, right? Generate the corresponding uh, map that fits this aerial image, right? Again, here are all these examples, right? Giving the a sketch, right? Generate the corresponding, um, you know, object or image fits this kind of uh, sketch input, okay? So how 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 do we achieve this, right? Uh, if we're still using the GAN network, right? We've only consider uh, or using the noise Z as the input to the generator. We can generate some of the image, right? GZ here, right? And then we can using the discriminator um, to kind of differentiate if this is a real image or a fake image. And here, right? So for if we are doing uh, this kind of a sketch uh, to image uh, translation or generation, right? So if we're using the vanilla again, what we do is we fit this input X into the generator. It will generate an image, may look like this. And the discriminator may tell, okay, this is a real image, right? Because visually this is very plausible, right? But this generator can also generate some image uh, like this, right? And the discriminator will also tell this is uh, this is real too, right? But in our application, right, based on this sketch, the the correct or um, the ideal case, the ideal image we want is this one, right? Because this general image fits the kind of kind of the sketch or edges, right? But this one, although look realistic, but does not fit the profile, right? Based on this kind of sketch. Uh, or edge input. So to mitigate this issue, um, this condition again, well, you know, taking, uh, instead of just using the input, right? And they were also using this as a label, okay? So the original image as a label, right? So instead of a single one, and we need to input uh, this general image and the real, uh, and the real image into this discriminator. And to ask the discriminator to tell if this is a real or fake pair, okay? So here, this X is input, one is the corresponding ground truth image, so this one. And the G GX is the generated image, and this X is the input, right? So if we, if we say this generated image is look like this, right? This black one, right? And we, if we take this op optimization function here, right? So we take this sketch and this generated, and this Y is the label, right? Which is corresponding to this brown one, right? Have the, the same or very close uh, edge as the input X. And this discriminator will based on that information to decide if this is a pair, a real pair or fake pair, right? So obviously if we are this generated image, it look like this, and we are given this information uh, of the label Y, definitely when we train the discriminator is going to, uh, 
able to predict, right? That black uh, handbag generated is not going to be a real pair, right? Because that does not match the uh, the edge detection map uh, corresponding to this X here. Okay. So basically it will match the uh, the joint distribution, right? So the, the generated image uh, with the ground truth um, and also trying to match that with the the input and the actual ground truth why right which the which is the realistic image okay and in addition to this um the the paper uh this pixel uh, to pixel paper here they also adding uh, additional uh, loss function right so the generator this task is not to only for the discriminator but also to be um, in a general image close to the ground truth label, right? In a L2 sense, right? The L2 sense means we want to measure uh, the similarity, right? Maybe using in terms of the pixels, okay? And they experiment with the L2, uh, L2 loss and the L1, and they found that L1 performs better uh, because L2 loss may have some, may cause some blurring issue. But for the L1 loss, right, they encourage uh, some of the sharpness, right? So maybe the edges, those are, can be more sharp. But uh, the purpose of this uh, term is trying to uh, make sure the generated image is going to be close to the actual image, okay? So we are using this L1 or maybe using the L2 term uh, to, to add an additional constraint for that, okay? So the overall objective uh, for this pixel to pixel or conditional GAN is you have the usual gain loss, right? And also we want to plus uh, this kind of um, additional L1 loss or L2 loss uh, to measure the similarity of the generated image, okay? And this slide shows some of the example. So you have the uh, input, this edge map or sketch, then uh, we have this output uh, being generated using this conditional gain approach. And as you can see from the result here, right? So the generated image uh, kind of uh, fits, uh, if you're doing some edge detection, right? On this uh, real image here, and maybe you are able to generate the edge map uh, looks very close to the original input, okay? And especially if you look at this example here, right? So they have some specific patterns or logos and, and the generated image uh, kind of fits uh, this kind of, um, patterns that uh, that is uh, within this original input. And here's another example, um, you know, trained on the edge map, and this is the resulting images using this conditional GAN. And uh, yeah, so they have a very nice demo. So if you're interested, you can go to uh, this uh, demo website. I'm not sure if they are, if it is still available. So basically you can uh, you can upload some uh, input, maybe you can draw some sketch, right? So user uploaded an example as input and they were using their uh, conditional GAN, there's all this pixel to pixel approach uh, to generate the corresponding output that um, that is kind of fits the, the profile or have the similar patterns as the original input, okay? Okay, all right. So yeah, so here is another example. Um, you know, they are doing this, the input uh, map to generate the corresponding uh, satellite image. And we can we can do vice versa, right? Based on the satellite image and we can generate this uh, map. Okay, this is another application they do uh, from the grayscale uh, to the color space. Okay, so that's the uh, conditional again. So the next work uh, we're gonna talk about is the uh, unpaired image to image translation uh, using cycle consistent adversarial network. So uh, often referred to as cycle again, okay. So previously we've talked about this vanilla again, right? So on the, the very left side, you have the noise, you go to this generator and you generate this fake image. Right. Then you also have some, you know, real training data and you put these, uh, you know, two sources of data to the discriminator to train the discriminator to predict if it's going to be real or fake. 
And for this condition again, right, proposed in this pixel to pixel uh, paper, they adding an extra um, con uh, constraint, right? So to adding this kind of uh, class label information as a condition, right, to generate image that is able to fit this condition, right? So they have a, a pair, um, the input and the corresponding label, right? But for the paired, uh, for the condition again, right? So the, the challenge is that we need this kind of pair information, right? So you have this input X, but in order to generate an image may fits well uh, for this input, we need to have this corresponding, uh, you know, ground truth, right? This is the ground truth, original ground truth image that may have this kind of edge. So we, are, we have to collect these kind of paired image for training, right? But uh, for some of the applications, uh, these kind of pairwise uh, images are very difficult or maybe impossible to, uh, to collect, right? For example, if I want to generate, uh, you know, a zebra from the horse, right? So in this case, how are you gonna generate a pair, right? This horse corresponding to zebra, right? So it's impossible, right? And also, you know, we we want to generate some of the uh, paintings from some of the uh, real photos, right? How can you, you know, formulate a pair? Maybe you can ask some of the artists, right, to to help you based on photo and you know draw a specific painting. Then you may have a every good a uh, pair of image for the training. But this is not definitely is not a very effective or cost effective uh, method. Uh, to to train this kind of network, right? Oftentimes, we have unpaired uh, data, right? So you can have you can collect a lot of photo uh, from internet, right? So user may taking photos at different uh, sites, right? Um, and you may also collect a lot of uh, paintings, right? From maybe some art gallery, right? So you can generate uh, a set of uh, real. Um, you know, photos and also generate a set of uh, art paintings, but they are not one-to-one -one correspondence, right? So they, so in, in other words, they are unpaired, okay? But how can we leverage these unpaired data, right? Still able to train the model, right? Train the generator that is able to uh, generate uh, image that kind of fits the input, okay? So that's their objective for this cycle game paper. Okay, so let's look at uh, example, um, you know, using uh, the horse uh, to zebra, okay, as the uh, image to image uh, translation, okay. So the the original, imp you know, input will be the all the horse images, right? And the goal is we want to generate uh, the corresponding uh, zebra image. And we, again, you know, for this particular example or application here, we are not able to collect a pair, uh, a pair, uh, you know, one to one pair of the data, right? Because this is not possible. So the idea of this uh, cycle again is they want to using instead of just one generator, so they adding an extra generator. Okay, so here you have the original input X, right, which is from the horse domain. So all these images gonna be only contain horse. And you have a generator G, okay? And this G is responsible for generating uh, image from horse to zebra, okay? So the generate image is called uh, GX, right? So this is an example of generated. And you have another uh, generator uh, indicated by F. So this generator uh, aims to generate uh, image from the zebra domain. Uh, to the horse domain. So it's kind of doing the reverse, right? G is from horse to zebra and F is from zebra to horse, okay? So if we have these two generator, right? So we kind of form like a, a cycle or loop, right? So from horse to zebra, then zebra back to horse, okay? So, and if we have this kind of cycle, right? We can enforce some of the consistency, right? If all coming from this original input X, we go to the zebra space and we going back to the horse space, right? So this FGX should be very close 
to the uh, original input X, right? So here they are using uh, this L1 norm, uh, trying to uh, make sure or to regularize this kind of uh, consistency in the L2 or L1 space, right? So that's uh, the that's what they proposed uh, for this kind of unpaired image to image translation using this cycle consistency. And we can uh, take a look at uh, this uh, cycle loss here, right? So if we our input uh, indicated by this uh, green box, right, which is the uh, the horse image. Right, we, we're using the generator G to generate, let's say we generate this image, right, this zebra. And we, we're using the, sorry about that. We also using the generator F, right, to generate image corresponding, uh, go back to the uh, horse domain, right? So here, if we compute the loss, right, FGX minus X here, the loss is gonna be very small, right? But if you look at uh, another example, right? So if the original input X is the this red box, okay, this horse right here, and the network is generating uh, a zebra image, right, using the generator G, and then going back to the horse domain using F, which is like this one, then we compute uh, this cycle loss, right? Uh, this one and this one you can see that it will have a large loss, right? Because visually they are very different, right? Here, here's, there's two horses, but this one only have one. And these shape and the color and the background are very different, right? So you will have a very uh, large cycle loss. So this will penalize the network to learn this kind of mapping, right? So this, this mapping will be the idea case, right? Because only in this case, the cycle loss will be um, you know, consider minimum, okay. So we can also do the backwards, right? So before we have this, um, you know, horse to zebra, then back to uh, horse, right? And we can do the reverse cycle, right? So we go from zebra and first using this uh, horse generator, right? So from zebra to horse, and we can then using the generator G, right, generate uh, horse to zebra, we can have another cycle and we can using another uh, cycle loss, right? So we can using these two uh, to kind of constrain or learn a very good, learn the uh, generator uh, G and F very well, okay. And here shows some of the examples uh, of using cycle GAN uh, to do this kind of unpaired image to image translation. So this is uh, Monet's painting to photo, right? So this is the uh, input painting, and this is the uh, generated uh, output of the uh, photo. Um, so as you can see that some of the content, uh, like the background, the object, the scene layout are very close to the original painting, right? So you, you don't see any specific or drastic changes uh, for these main uh, semantic information. Um, but again, if if we human to perceive this uh, photo, we can still see this may not look realistic, right? So you can still see some hint, um, you know, or some cues that this more or less look like a, a painting, right? Especially this cloud, right? It's not look like realistic, but this can very close um, since we are doing this kind of unpaired image to image translation. So this actually a very decent good, uh, decent job doing the image translation. Here's another example. Um, we're doing the original in paint, in painting, the painting, then we have this uh, generated output as the photo. And here is another one, a boat on the river. And this is the uh, generated uh, photo, okay, using this uh, cycle GAN approach. And here is another example. And we want to do maybe orange uh, to Apple translation, right? So visually, right? So you can tell some of the, you know, maybe some characteristics from Apple, right? Maybe the uh, the color change, right? So from the orange to some of the greenish or uh, reddish uh, color on the uh, on these objects, right? Maybe look uh, have some resemblance as actual uh, the real apples, but uh, some of the, 
you know, characteristics may not be true, you know, for apples, right? And this is another example, um, you know, from orange to apple here. And this is the uh, example of uh, translating from horse to zebra, okay? So it kind of learns to, um, you know, predict this uh, black and white stripes on the zebra. And here's another example. Uh, definitely this is not perfect, right? So, um, but uh, for this unpaired image to image uh, translation, uh, the result uh, look uh, promising. And of course, there's gonna be some failure cases. So for this one, um, you can see the translation also kind of diffuse to like uh, the some of the unrelevant objects, right? Even the background, you have this kind of black and white uh, stripes on these uh, on these uh, stones or rocks. And this is the uh, what they do for this uh, video. So what they do is they do the um, frame by frame uh, translation. So they take one frame and do the translation and take another frame and do the translation. So obviously there's a lot of artifacts, right? So, you know, the black and white stripe on this horse, uh, they, they are not consistent, right? So you can see the changes across frame, right? Because they are doing, uh, they are doing this kind of translation frame by frame, right? They are not consistent. Uh, they are not considered this kind of temporal consistency. So these are some of the uh, big artifacts uh, can be observed from this demo video, okay.